back to my channel thanks you all thanks everyone for always coming back to watch my video um today i'm going to be showing you how to make a cushion cover it's a square shaped cushion so i'm going to be showing you how to make it but first i'll show you the fabric and what we need so i'm going to be using this pretty fabric i'm only going to make one because the fabric can only allow me to make just one so i'm not going to be making a pair so i'm going to be using this lovely elephant fabric and then we need a zip this is a 20 inches zip so we need a zip we need our scissors of course we need our measurement tape and a ruler a chalk and then the measurement of the coaching so the length the wideness everything is 23 so we are going to be working with 23 plus seam allowance stay tuned and i'll show you how i cut it okay uh, let's start so what i have done i have folded the fabric into four i folded it into four so that it's easy for me to cut it Remember the measurement of the cushion is 23 by 23. So, but I have folded the fabric into four. So the length is still going to be 23 plus one inches sewing allowance. And we also need one inches for zip allowance. And then we also, as I say, we need one inches at the bottom here to sew it. One inches on the sides to sew it. We need the zip allowance as well, one inches or one and a half inches. So let's get cutting. So first thing I'm going to do is take the length first. The length is 23 plus one inches to sew it. So I mark it down. So I'm marking 24 plus one and a half inches zip allowance. The zip allowance is going to be on top here. So that is 25 and a half. So I mark 25 and a half here. Okay, so I do the same thing. So I mark 25 and a half at the other end here. Make sure your fabric is ironed out nicely. So 25 and a half here. Okay, so that's the length. I'm just going to take the ruler. And just draw the 25 mark. Okay, so I'm going to be marking the one and a half inches here and draw a line as well. So I know that is a zip allowance so I just take my chop my ruler and just make the line straight okay so now, because the fabric is folded into four, I'm not going to be marking 24 across like this. It's going to be too wide because I've already folded the fabric on this side into four. So it's only the length that is 24 because the length has to be 24. It's 23 by 23. So because I've already folded it, by the time I open it out, it should all be measuring the same thing, hopefully. So 23 divided by 2 is 11 and a half. So I just mark 11 and a half here first. I mark 11 and a half all the way down. First, before I had the sewing allowance. I 
take a ruler and roll it across, draw a straight line. So remember, this fabric is an elephant fabric and all the elephants are facing upward. So when you are sewing it, make sure the elephant is facing upward. So this section here will be the zip allowance. Okay, so now I'm going to be adding one inch seam allowance. I'm marking from the fold end to the unfold end. Don't mark, wait, doesn't matter too much, but don't mark from this side to this side. Mark from the fold. You can only mark any way you want if you have not folded the fabric into four. So in this case, mark from the folded edge. It's much easier that way. So I'm going to be adding one inch sewing allowance. So I mark the one inches all the way. From the top to the bottom. From the top to the where the length stop. You just take a ruler and draw a straight line. Okay, so now all you need to do is cut it out. You just cut it out. That's so that it's remaining. You cut just this line straight to where the length stop, and then you come this way. I'll cut it out so you can see the square shape. it out I'm going to open it out now so you can see that it's square hopefully it should be all right yeah so that's the size of the cushion plus zip allowance so I'm just Measuring it to make sure everything is 25 and a half because I know there's a zip allowance of one and a half inches So you just measure it across. Yeah, everything is 25 and a half So what I need to do now Is take it to the sewing machine Take it to the sewing machine and I will start by stitching in one inches. Okay, all, let's get sewing. So first thing we are going to do, as I said before, we are going to sew one inches on both sides before we sew the zip allowance close with a loose stitch so that we can easily lose it apart once we sew the zip. If you are watching my videos, you will realize that if you have been watching my video, I always like to sew my zip allowance um, close. It makes sewing the zip much easy. So I just want to mark the one and a half inches zip allowance wideness done. So this is one inch. I'm just marking the one inches. Where I'm going to start the sewing from. So you can mark the one inches all the way down if you want to. 
make it easy sometimes but if you know how to eyeball it or gauge it whichever you can just sew it if not you can mark it all the way down so i'm going to be sewing it this way i'm going to be sewing it this way not sewing it down just yet so this way first because i need to put the zip before we sew it close okay so that's the one inches so in this case because i'm using a 20 inches zip allowance i might have to change my zip allowance because my zip i may have to change my zip because the zip is only 20 inches so i'm going to have to get a more longer zip like a size 20 24 a size 24 zip this is only 20 inches zip so i'm going to get a size 24 inches zip stay tuned okay uh, i've gotten a longer zip uh just to say before you cut your kitchen cover please don't be like me be sure of the size of your kitchen so you can get the correct um zip if not you won't be able to make the cushion and uh, the cushion cover so i've gotten a size 24 inches zip so now i can sew my cushion cover so please make sure you got the correct size of the cushion you are working with and the zip the correct size of the zip don't be like me okay so now I back stitch there and then I'll sew the remaining with a long stitch because remember this is the zip allowance so I'm going to sew a loose stitch so it's easy for me to lose it out when I sew the zip on it as you can see the elephant are facing up so if you are using a, a fabric that got a pattern similar to this or a different kind of pattern that all the all the styles all the design are facing upward make sure you cut it so that when you finish cutting it the flower or the elephant or the ten is the tree is all standing upright and not turning facing down so once i get to this end of the one inches I'm going to bring back my sewing machine stitch to the normal sewing stitch. Okay, so I take it off. So what I'm going to do now is to sew the zip. So I'll take my zip. I take my zip. I place my zip at the end here just at the point of the one inches so i put i place the zip there so i'm going to sew the zip all the way to the other end and then i'll come back and show you what i've done okay all uh, so i have sewn the zip as you can see i've sewed the zip i've loosed it out just move the camera so you can see very well. So I've loosed it out. So you can see, that's the zip. See the zip? That's the zip. That's where the cushion is going to go in through. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to stitch the, the zip facing down properly. So I just stitch is zip facing properly down so it's not opening and closing and opening
So I, st I stitch it down properly. I'm just going to stitch it down properly. Make sure the fabric is separated so you don't sew, mistakenly sew one side close. Okay, so now I'm going to join it together now. I'm going to be joining all the edges together now. Starting from the top here. Starting from here, I'll join all the edges, the square shape. So as I say, it's one inch sewing allowance. If you can't gauge it, you can mark it down. So you follow it. Or you can use your sewing machine game gauge. You can buy a sewing machine gauge. Some is like a magnet. So you can put it on your sewing machine. So it allow you to know when you want to sew one inches or when you want to sew half inches. And we also have some sewing machine foot that comes in um, in different size like if you want to sew half an inches foot uh, if you want to sew half an inches it's called half an inches foot and so on I was thinking I have one here I would have shown you how it looks like but anyhow if you can't just mark the one inches down with chalk and follow the line So when you get to the bottom point here, leave your needle down and you can lift the machine up. With industrial machine, you got a lifter foot. So I, I lift it up and I turn it around. And then I continue the one inch seam. As I say, you can mark it so you know that you are sewing the correct seam allowance. When you are sewing, when you get to a point and you need to mark it, you stop and just mark it. So before you get to the end, just mark this one inches again, just to make sure you are sewing at the correct seam allowance. Leave your needle down, turn your fabric, and continue with your one inch seam allowance. Mark it if you need to mark it, like what I'm doing. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm going to sew it to the one inches allowance here, the zip top, one inches there. Okay, so what you need to do next, if you have an overlocker machine, you can overlock all the edge. Overlock all the edge just to make it look neat inside. So the next thing we need to do now, practically our sewing is finished. So you just to turn it out. You open the zip. If you can use your finger to push the zip open a bit. It's a good idea to zip the zip opened a little bit before you actually stitch it all around so that it won't be like me trying to unzip it now. So once you manage to get the zip opened and then you can turn it out. So make sure you zip the zip open a little bit before you sew it all around so it's easy for you to to turn it out you won't be fiddling with it like what i'm doing because i forgot to zip it open a bit first okay okay so i've managed to zip it open so you can see me doing so at the end here at the end here i'm going to stitch it down properly so that it doesn't come apart too quickly so i'm going to stitch it down properly Do the same to the other side. Okay, so now just zip it open to the end. And then you turn it out. Trim all this excess thread off. So I've turned it out. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to iron it and I'll show you how it looks like.